All right, so you all voted and you chose circulation. So we're going to talk about like blood and uh, how your liver is a part of your blood system as well. Um, and how immunity works inside of your blood and all that. Um, so first let's talk about uh, circulation. I'm sure you've heard this word with respect to the circulatory system. Uh, and let's go way, way, way back to the first person who thought about how stuff gets around the body. This guy's name was uh, Galen. He was a Greek philosopher. Probably capitalized that G there. He was a Greek philosopher, and he thought that veins, so he was able to identify veins, but they pumped what he called natural blood, which came from the liver. Now, if I was to say natural blood right now, we would have 20 different definitions by that. Um, you know, what TJ thinks is going to be different than what Pahua thinks. I mean, it, it's going to be all over the place. So this word itself is kind of problematic. So anyway, so veins pump natural blood. And where did natural blood come from? Well, the liver, of course. Um, and then he thought that arteries pumped heat. Now, this is pretty wrong. This is pretty wrong. Um, and so this was widely believed for a long, long, long time until the 17th century. That's the 1600s. There was this guy named William Harvey. William Harvey did um, a lot of experiments and, and cutting into things and figured out that this is not how it happens, that arteries and veins are connected to each other. Um, through, through capillaries. Now he couldn't see capillaries, but he guessed that they were connected to each other and that arteries pump blood from the heart. That means away from the heart and that veins pump blood or return blood to the heart. So he's the one that figured out that this is all, all connected to one another. And so let's sketch this out, how this looks. Okay, so we're gonna have um, a heart. I'm gonna draw it in two different colors here. So we're going to have tubes coming into half of our heart here, then leaving that part. He, he figured out that there are different chambers in the heart as well. And so what we have here are veins that are coming into the heart. And these veins are coming from the body all over the body. And they come into here, this is the right side of the heart. On our drawing, it's gonna look like the left, but when we consider anatomy and body parts, we have to think about um, that particular part. And then the blood leaves the heart through arteries and goes over to the lungs. Now, that's where this blood picks up oxygen. And when it comes back to the heart, once again in veins, it comes into a set of tubes. There's a couple chambers in here as well. Let's make this a little bit better here. And this blood then leaves the heart through arteries again, where it goes out to the body and comes back. So he figured out this whole circulation aspect of it. So the heart, he figured out, has four chambers. 
one, two, three, and four. It calls these chambers of the heart. These are places where the blood pools and gathers for a minute before it's pumped out. Um, one and three are what is known as, are what is known bleh, together as atria. Uh, singular, those are atriums. So singular is an atrium. And all the blood from the veins comes into these atria. And then two and four are very strong muscular parts of the heart called ventricles. So each one is a ventricle. Uh, these do the pumps. These are what do the actual pumping action of the heart that goes out to these big places. So there's a name for these two sides of circulation here. Um, we've got the circulation that comes from the right side of the heart to the lungs and then back to the left side of the heart. This is called pulmonary circulation. By Spanish speakers, you'll know that pulmonis refers to the lungs. And then we have our circulation that comes from the left side of the heart and then back to the heart. And because this goes out to all of the different systems in our body, this is called systemic circulation. So let's talk about these two circulations. So I'm going to draw a, a little bit of a black line through some of this drawing right here. So we have um, this circulation here that comes out of the left side of the heart. That's coming right here. It's going to go out to our bodies. So this is our systemic circulation here. Now. You could um, find this picture or any picture like this and print it out and put it in your notes if you want to, but there's no need to draw it. Let's just talk about the systemic circulation. So these are all arteries. Arteries leave the heart. These are all arteries. And you can see that these arteries branch off into all kinds of different places. There's arteries that go to the liver, that go to our guts, that go to our kidneys, that go down to our toes and our butts and our things like that. Um, the systemic circulation also comes up here to our upper body, which is our, our arms and our shoulders and our brain and then the different parts of our head and ears and mouth and things like that. And then these arteries branch into smaller and smaller and smaller blood vessels. And these are what we call capillaries. We already know about capillaries because we talked about them in digestion. And then these capillaries gather up all that blood and return it back to the heart. So this is our systemic circulation. Our pulmonary circulation leaves the left side of the, I'm sorry, it leaves the right side of the heart, goes out to our lungs. Once again, these are arteries, branches off into all these little tiny capillaries because here's where we can take stuff in and out of our blood, and then comes back to our heart in these veins. These are veins that come back up to the heart here. So let's take a couple minutes here and let's talk about these three kinds of blood vessels here. We have arteries, veins, and capillaries. Okay. Um, I'm gonna make a little sketch of each of these. Um, our arteries and our veins, let's make them about the same size so that we can compare different parts to them. Arteries have really small insides compared to veins, which have much larger insides. You might remember that the inside of a tube is called a lumen. So here's our lumen. So the first thing we should notice is that veins have a much larger lumen than the arteries do. Okay. And the reason that that is, is because arteries have these three really thick layers on the outside of them. And veins 
have the same three layers. I almost can't even draw them on this picture. Have the same three layers, but they are much, much, much thinner. They are much, much, much thinner. So let's um, label what these are. And we'll label them on the artery, and they'll be the same on the vein as well. So we have this thick layer of um, connective collagen fibers. Thick layer of connective collagen fibers. And the reason that there's these thick layer of connective collagen fibers is because the artery operates at a really high pressure. The pressure inside of the lumen of the artery is anywhere between 80 to 120 millimeters of mercury. Hg is mercury. Now, this is just our unit of pressure here. That's how we measure it. Now, to give you an idea about how high of a pressure this is, let's talk about the veins. Veins have a much, much, much lower pressure. The pressure in veins is anywhere between 5 and 10 millimeters of mercury. But if the blood vessels are coming out of the heart in the arteries, and the heart is pumping that, it makes sense that, that there's a lot of pressure there makes sense that there's a lot of pressure there. This is, if, if, if I was to do this as, a, as some kind of equivalent, your artery here, this pressure would be like the water pressure coming out of a fire hydrant, and this pressure here would be like the water pressure coming out of your sink. Okay? Way higher over here. And because it's way higher over here, our walls need to be really thick so that these blood vessels don't rupture and burst. Okay. Um, our next layer, our next layer of our arteries right here is a thick layer of muscle and elastin. Elastin is a protein that it helps it, well, I mean, it's elastic. It makes it snap back to its size. So in order to keep this high pressure of blood, which keeps your blood flowing, your arteries will contract and bounce back to help pump that blood through and keep that high pressure. Once again, your veins have that same layer. Your veins have that same layer, except it's just way thinner because it has way less pressure. So it's not needed. Okay. And then finally we have our inner layer here, our inner layer here, and this is the endothelium. It's kind of like the inner skin of the blood vessel. Um, this is just a layer of cells that will, like, you know, touch the blood and all that kind of stuff. All right, so we've got our arteries at really high pressure. We've got our veins at very low pressure. We've got um, a thick layer of connective collagen fibers on our arteries so that these blood vessels can withstand that high pressure and not burst. We have a thick layer of muscle and elastin, which um, contract to help to keep that high blood pressure and keep that blood flowing. And then we have our endothelium. Now veins have all three of these levels, as all three of these uh, layers as well. But veins have another problem, and that is that veins often have to go against gravity. You know, think about all the blood that goes down to your toes. How, do, how does that blood come back up against gravity um, back into your heart? And the answer is, is that veins have something else that arteries don't have. Veins have valves in them. Veins have these valves in them. And these valves are one-way valves, which means that the blood can only go one way. Um, veins also are often found uh, in between muscle groups. And the reason is, is because veins will often use those muscles contracting to help um, pump and squeeze the blood up. You know, think about any time you've sat in a chair for so long that you start to lose some circulation in your legs. It's because your muscles and your legs aren't moving and those that blood is pooling down there in the down in your legs and things like that. So if I was to draw this here, I would um, draw a tube. Here's our vein. And we are going to have these 
one-way valves here. And I'm going to put this vein in between some muscles. So this is our muscle. And so when the muscles contract, it squeezes the blood up through the veins. And then when the muscles relax and that blood tries to fall back down, those valves close so that the blood can't go backwards. This way your blood doesn't pool up down there in your legs and things like that. But because there's low pressure, it's got to get up to your heart and it's got to go against gravity. And so we need these one-way valves and we need these muscles to help out here. Finally, we have our capillaries. We've drawn capillaries before. Remember that capillaries, capillaries are so small that their cell wall, that their cell, their endothelium here is often only a few cells. And this lumen here is so small that only one blood cell can fit at a time. So you really only have two layers. That car horn is really nice. You really only have two layers in a capillary. You have an endo layer, that's your endothelium, and then there's often a layer around it that just is just kind of protective. It's called a basement membrane. We don't need to know that. But remember, the point of a capillary is to be so small and so thin that stuff can easily cross into them, in and out of your blood. So this is where a lot of absorption and uh, excretion happens to and from your surrounding tissues. So think about our picture up here. Um, over here in your kidneys, you want to get rid of a bunch of waste from your blood. Uh, over here in our liver, you want to get rid of a bunch of toxins and things like that from your blood. Down here in your gut, you want to absorb all those nutrients from your blood. Over here in your lungs, you want to get rid of the CO2 and uh, take in the O2 in and out of your blood. And so you need something that's really, 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 really small. Um, sometimes these capillaries can have lots of extra pores in them to help that happen. And sometimes these capillaries can straight up have like giant holes in them so whole cells can get in and out of them. So here's a great picture that shows how that happens inside of your capillaries. Um, when you have really high pressure at the artery end of it, um, it makes it easier for things to go out of the blood. Uh, so fluid and things like that can exit the capillary. Um, not a lot of movement here in the middle, but when you're near the vein, there's really low pressure. There's really a lot of low pressure here. And so because there's low pressure here. The surroundings have a higher pressure and stuff can come into your blood. And finally, last thing, here's a couple real pictures of arteries and veins. Um, you can see right here this thick artery wall with the small lumen right here in the middle. Here's our lumen compared to our giant lumen here in this vein. Um, it's under such low pressure that the surrounding tissues can kind of squeeze it in and push it in so it loses its shape. Um, here again, you can see our nice thick artery walls with our little lumen on the inside because of that high pressure. It, it's able to maintain its shape. And then here's our vein with the much larger lumen, but our really thin walls. I mean, you can't even really see the layers in there. All right, that's it for notes today. Take it easy.